clap in church, don't you? Church should be a place where we clap. Please be seated. You know, last time I taught you some hand gestures that some of you have probably done before as kids, but I said, here's the church, there's the steeple, open the doors and see all the people. Do you remember that? Well, I want you to think about this. I want to add something to this. Here's the church, there's the steeple, open the doors and see all of the cheering people. Because I'm going to talk to you tonight a little bit about church cheers, the noise that the church should make. I love cheers. And the first time I ever remember hearing a cheer, I was in Laurel, Mississippi. I was probably five years old. <laughs> Laurel, Mississippi, man, that's the deep south. I'm talking about the real south. <laughs> we used to vacation there and hang out at my grandparents' house, and my grandmother had a loud voice. You know, that's probably where I get my loud voice from. And, and she would sit on that little porch swing, and my brother and I would be playing football in the front yard and the humidity, you could just cut it with a knife back and forth, just sweating, and, and, and she would do these cheers. But one cheer that she did, I've never forgotten, and, and let, me, let me do it for you if you don't mind. Once I heard my grandma say, the Laurel team is coming this way with a Vivo, with a Vivo, with a Vivo, Vivo, Bumbo, and a Riptail, Reptail, sitting on a cattail, Bum, Bum, Bum. What's the matter with that team that they can't see, that they can't play as well as we, with a Vivo, with a Vivo, with a Vivo, Vivo, Bumbo, and a Riptail, Reptail, sitting on a cattail, Bum, Bum, Bum. When I heard that cheer as a kid, that would motivate me to run faster to play harder. There's nothing like hearing cheers. Cheers sound good to our ears, don't they? But cheerleaders are encouraging. They're, they're, they're positive. No matter if you're winning or losing, they're with you. Cheers. I love cheers. Some people collect stamps. Others collect cars. I collect cheers. I had an incredible, I had an incredible college career. I played for the Florida State criminals, I mean Seminoles, my lifetime average, check it on the World Wide Web, 0 0.7 per game. That's 0 0.7 per game. How do you do that? Well, I did it, 0 0.7. I rode the bench, and I traveled all around the country with my teammates, and because I rode the bench, I got to listen to a lot of cheers. I never looked at the cheerleaders, but, <laughs> but I did hear a bunch of cheers. So I've collected these cheers, and I really think that, that, that God is into cheers. In fact, I was reading Scripture, and let me, let me share something with you that, that kind of leaped off the pages. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we better, I like this part, get on with it. We better get on with it. So we got these pioneers and veterans cheering us on, cheering you on and me on, cheering the church on in the heavenlies because they want us to get on with it. Here's the church. There's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people we're intertwined. The church should be a place of cheers. So when we open the doors to the church, and close them, it should sound ah, like that. I've got to ask you something. Are you cheering? Because I need cheers, and so do you. The world has a way of just beating the fool out of us, doesn't it? Yet I know when I come to church and when the doors are open, ah, the church is cheering for me because the church, we're the body of Christ. Believing is all about belonging. Read the New Testament. Someone makes a faith reception. Someone opens their house and, and, and makes God at home there by this faith reception. When Jesus infiltrates our lives, we become a part of the foundation of the body of Christ. So if we could hear the cheers ringing in our ears that God is cheering and all the pioneers and veterans are cheering, we wouldn't believe it. Maybe one of the cheers goes something like this. This is one that I've collected. This is one of my favorites, too. I was watching one of the best high school teams in America play years ago, and here is what the cheerleaders did. You got it. 
now use it. You got it, now use it. Come on, you got it, now use it. You got it, now use it. Man, they had it and they used it. They really did. Now we've got it, right? We've got the house, the local church, the hope of the world. Do you remember St. Paul? Paul was called Saul, and he was persecuting the church. He was killing Christians. He had this Damascus Road experience where, where, where Jesus talked to him, and here's what Jesus said, because remember, Saul was persecuting the church. He later became Paul. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Jesus so so understood and so identified with the church that he said, Paul, you are after me. We believe, we belong. We're a part of the living, breathing body of Christ. Each one of us, I'm talking about you and me, we're unique, we're one of a kind. We're all creative geniuses. If you ever say, well, you know what, I'm not creative, I'm not innovative, I can't do this, I can't do that, you're making a mockery of God's genius because all of us should utilize our giftedness and abilities within the venue, the context of the local church. Several years ago, I went to Las Vegas, and when I went to Vegas, I could not believe the signage. Las Vegas has nothing to say, but they know how to say it. In the local church so often, we have everything to say, but we don't know how to say it. You've got gifts that I don't have. You've got it, now use it. We have this children's ministry that is just totally off the chain. You've got it, now use it. We got the student ministry. We're building up leaders and people who are difference makers in junior high, in high school. You got it, now use it. Single adults, we have small groups and ministry activities just for you. You've got it, now use it. We have mission trips all over the world. You've got it. Now use it. We have campuses in North Dallas and downtown and in Fort Worth and in Miami and right here in Grapevine. You've got it. Now use it. I want to ask you something. You've got it. You've got the local church, the hope of the world. Are you using it? The question should not be, okay, how does my church become creative? The question should be, God, what are those blockades that are keeping me from unleashing my creativity that you've given me within the context of this biblically functioning community. Because when a bunch of Christians get together, here's the church, there's the steeple, open the doors to see all the creative people. When a bunch of Christians get together, we should be the most creative and innovative force in the universe. That reminds me of another cheer. We've got spirit, yes we do. We've got spirit, how about you? Oh, wait a minute, oh my goodness. Let's, let's start over. Now, I understand that rhythm is a challenge. Some are like, we've got spirit. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The word power in the original language is pronounced dynamis. Say dynamis with me. We get the word dynamite from it. You remember that show Good Times? That's one of my favorite shows. I watch those reruns now. Jimmy Walker, dynamite, I love that. We have power, we have dynamite power in the local church. When Jesus comes into our heart and we make our heart his home, what does he do? The first thing on his punch list is to place the person of the Holy Spirit inside of your life and mine, and the Holy Spirit redecorates us from the inside out. We're a temple, a dwelling place, a house of the Holy Spirit of God. Again, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors and see all the Spirit-filled people. We got the Spirit of God right here in your life and in mind, something just freaky happens, something supernatural happens when a bunch of believers get together and open the Word and study it in a corporate way. It's just, it's just phenomenal. So you've got spirit. I've got spirit. Yeah, we do. I mean, are you, 
deferring to the Spirit? Are you listening to the Spirit? Are you allowing the Spirit to coach you and to prod you and to motivate you and to encourage you, are you? Well, it's not gonna happen if you don't make this house your home or another local house your home because 95% of the time the word church is used in the New Testament is, is referring to a specific local church. Here's another cheer. I, this one too is just near and dear to my heart. This one, it's not my favorite, but it's probably my second favorite, okay? Get your hat, your coat, and get on out of here. I said, get your hat, your coat, and get on out of here. Do it with me. Get your hat, your coat, and get on out of here. Snap your fingers. Get your hat, your coat, and get on out of here. I love it. Because if you open your Bibles and look up again, Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church. He didn't say, I will build my hospital, or I will build my nonprofit, or I will build my university, or I will build, no, no, he said, I will build my what? Church. And then he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And here's one of the things I love about being a believer. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. I'm fighting from victory. I've read the back of the book and guess what? It says we win. So I can tell the devil, take your hat, your coat, and get on out of here. Take your hat and coat and get on out of here. Because when the church shows up, hell backs up. That's a fact, Jack. I love that cheer. Get your hat and your coat. Oh, that's good. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. One of my favorite verses. This is a direct verse now. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna warn you, it says, do not be misled. In other words, some people are being misled. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Push them back, push them back, way back. Yeah, push them back, push them back, way back. We've got to do that in a lot of areas in our lives. Certain people, push them back, push them back, way back. Certain places, push them back, push them back, way back. Certain influences, push them back, push them back, way back. Because these things, these, these entities, these forces are keeping you away from the priority of the house. Again, it's all about the house. Come hell or high water, it's about the house. Broke, busted, and disgusted, it's about the house. The house, the house. It's about the house. Now, the scripture says in Titus chapter 3, verse 10, this. Now, this is, this is another scary verse. It says, warn a divisive person once, and then warn him a second time, and after that, have nothing to do with him. Wow, that's, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit of God inspired the writer of that book to say that about the unity of the church. That's how important unity is within the body of Christ. Warn a divisive, a negative person once, twice, and tell them, na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. Man, this person is, 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 is talking down the church and they're, and they're negative about me and other people behind. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. You know what, when is this guy, you know, this guy always is dragging me to the, to the strip clubs. Na, 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 Hey, 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 goodbye. When I'm with her, she's taking me places that cause me to, na, 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 
Na, na, na, na. Hey, 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 goodbye. But I really love him and we're having sex and if I give him what he wants, then one day he'll marry me. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. Who are they in your life? People always say, well, they've been coming to me. They've said this or they feel that. This will mess somebody up. Just say, who are they? They, we should have the right they. The wrong they will keep you in the fray and you'll become prey. That's P-R-E-Y. The right they will, will, will pray, P-R-A-Y, for you. The right they, they're tough, they're honest, they're encouraging, and they're yielded to God and to his house and to being an authentic follower of Jesus. Amen. So, so, so a lot of you, I mean, you gotta do push them back, push them back, way back, I understand that. I mean, you gotta just push back. But some need to get crazy radical, I don't mean mean, but crazy radical and go, na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. I like that one too. I really enjoy singing. This is my favorite cheer. I'll just, I'll just tell you now. This is my favorite. In high school, I played against a uh, school, the Keenan Raiders. In Keenan, they had the greatest cheers ever, 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 ever. And here's, here's, here's one of their cheers that they would do all the time. We are the Raiders. Oh, yeah. We eat potatoes. Oh, yeah. On Saturday night. Oh, yeah. We dine right. Oh, yeah. With cheese. And with ease. Say, oh yeah. oh, yeah. Say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Raiders. Let's give it up for the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, because if you're a follower of Jesus, you're a Raider, man. You're a Raider, woman. I'm talking about ACT. I-O-N. We're aggressive. B-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-V-E. We're Raiders. What are we going to talk about? Dissing God's church? Turning our back on the only institution that Jesus ever built? Revolving our lives around some lake house or field house or new house as opposed to the house? You're a believer, what are you smoking? Come on now. You're a raider. And we're commanded, Hebrews 10, 25, to worship together corporately, to be a part of the banquet, to eat potatoes, oh yeah. On Saturday night, the best Christian show up on Saturday night. On Saturday night, oh yeah, we dine right, oh yeah, with cheese and with ease. I'll sometimes just clap for myself because God gives me the words to say, I'll just, you know, it's not me anyway, I just, the church. And in, in fact, Hebrews 10, 25, elaborates on this. It says, let us not give up meeting together. I like that. Let's not give up meeting together. As some were in the habit of doing, even back in the day, some were in the habit of like, you know what? The lake house, the field house, the new house. No, no, no. The house. But let us encourage. Dun, 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 dun. That's the cheering. Let us encourage one another. All the more as you see the day approaching. I was in the fifth grade and I used to go to South Carolina football games. And the other teams haven't been that great, but I used to go to the games. And a friend of mine, who's now a pastor of a phenomenal church in Atlanta, he was the head cheerleader. And this guy had this cool voice, very, very Southern. And, and he, you know, he would have the microphone in front of the student section. He would lead the cheers and everybody would be like, oh, wow. I mean, they, they loved him. And he used to do this cheer. You might have heard this one. Bang, bang, choo-choo train. Come on, Gamecocks, do your thing. Uh. Well, let's change that, okay? <laughs> bang, bang, choo-choo train. Come on, fellowship, do your thing. Uh. <laughs> Say, uh, with me. Uh. There you go. Well, we got to ask this, uh, this, this question. What's our thing? Why are we here? Why do we exist? What is the church? An institution? A holy health club? 
The church is the body of Christ. If you believe, you belong. If you're a kidney, if you're by yourself, you're going to shrivel up and die. If you're a lung, if you're by yourself, you're going to shrivel up and die. Everything works together in great unity as we do the stuff because you're a central, critical part of the body of Christ. If you don't believe me, yesterday I was, I was gar fishing. Gar with the big teeth. If you don't know what a gar is, I don't have time to explain, but my son caught a gar. I was, I was barefoot in my boat and like an idiot, which I can be, so can you. I brought the gar in the boat and look, look get, get a close up here. Look, turn my toe all black and blue, the teeth barely shaved the top of my foot. It hurt, a lot of blood, etc. Thankfully, I was fishing in front of a friend's house who was very active here at Fellowship Church. He said, you need first aid because gar have all this slime and weird funk all over them. And anyway, I, I, I parked my boat, ran up to his house and he put all this stuff on there. So it's, it's feeling better, but you know what? This, this, this toe right here hurts, this really hurts, and that hurts right now. Now, you don't think that part of your body matters that much. I mean, who cares, the top of your foot. I mean, who cares, that little, ah, that, I mean, who cares about that toe? Well, you know what, it matters. <laughs> you might be a big toe in the church. You might be the top of a foot. It matters what you do. It matters. Let me put my, well, I'll just do like this for the rest of the time. I don't want to mess with it. What's our thing at Fellowship Church? Acts chapter 2. We exist to do four things. Say four with me. Four. Like fourth quarter. Four. You've seen that? Four. We exist, Acts chapter 2, to communicate, care, to celebrate, and share. Say it with me. Communicate and care, celebrate and share. Communicate. The first church, what do they do? They taught. The people fed on the disciples' teaching. They fed. But they didn't just get fat. They didn't just get spiritually obese. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> they were nourished and then they got off of their rears and got off the stands and into the playing field. So we exist, what? To communicate, to teach. God's Word. Also, we exist to care. What is care? It's ministry. Read about, read about the early church, all the one another's. Fifty times the, the phrase one another. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Have fellowship with one another. One another, one another, one another, one another, one another. One another. To minister means to meet someone's emotional and spiritual and physical needs. So we exist to, to communicate and care and celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate is worship. That's expressing love to God. Celebrate, that's what they did. They worship, they worship, celebrate and share. What share? It's telling others the good news. It's inviting people to the banquet table. We serve the food. I'm the dude with the food. That's, that's what I do on the weekends. And, and, and it's, it, it's potatoes and, and, it's, and it's cheese and with ease because it's God's word. People come to hear God's word. Fellowship Church is full of incurable learners. So not only are we here to feed believers, we're also here to feed those who are far away from God. Why are you here? It's not to sin, it's to share others, to share Christ with others, to invite others to the banquet table. So, so that's, that's our thing, that's our, that's our thing. Fellowship Church is a fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship Church is all about worship. Fellowship Church is about discipleship, and we're also about leadership. Let's face it, ship happens. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah, we've, 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 we've taken that term and made it a dirty term. I'm talking about ship happens because it's Fellowship Church, right? We got a bunch of people. A bunch of fellows, men and women, rowing the ship in the same direction. Worship, fellowship, discipleship, leadership. Worship, fellowship, discipleship, leadership. And when everybody is in unity and in concert together, rowing the ship in the right direction, 
We don't have time to stand up and rock the boat, don't tip the boat over, rock the boat. We don't have time for that. So if you're rocking the boat, go somewhere else. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. Because we're a perfect church for imperfect people. And I'm, I'm imperfect. I love Cuban food. I just love it. And several weeks ago, I was in the Miami area where we have a church. Hi, Miami. This is way. Yeah. Lisa and I found this restaurant, and it has a really, really cool vibe. And I'm going to put my shoe back on because my, my foot's getting kind of cold. <laughs> but we found this restaurant, and we walked in, and we were the only people in the restaurant who were not Cuban. And, and this place was happening. I mean, they were like, there was a bar, I think, on the upper deck, and this woman was just singing her guts out. I mean, that great Latin, you know, that music, and you're just like, wow, you know? So energetic and, and, and so much fun. So we sat down, and I mean, the food was incredible. I mean, the real deal, authentic stuff. And after she'd done several songs, she stopped. And I was amazed that, that, that no one at first was really clapping for this lady. I mean, she, had, man, she, was, she was excellent. And then I watched the waiters and waitresses begin to do it like this. And then everybody else in the restaurant began to, yeah, oh man. The leaders, cheer leaders, right, in the restaurant were, were the ones who were doing the stuff, who were serving, and they got everyone else involved. So as a believer, as someone who's mature, as someone who's doing the stuff, we should be the first to cheer, to encourage, to bless, to help to sow seeds to, 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 to be the church. So it's got to start with you and me. Now, if you're not a believer yet, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that, but I thought it made sense. The church is, 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 is all about cheers because there's, there's, there's a game going on. There's this, this, this spiritual warfare. Now, yeah, we're, we're fighting from victory. We win and all that, yet it's, it's spiritual warfare. There's nothing like the local church. Well, there, there, there's tension when you've got a game going on, right? There's tension. And I don't know about your family. Sometimes we have tension in our family. Tension's good. Here's the church. There's the people open the doors. See all the cheering people. When you've got a bunch of people cheering, you can have some tension. People that close to one another, you can have, you can have tension. And we've got tension. Yes, we do. We've got tension. How about you, right? Well, well I want to throw out some things um, that, that will cause some tension, that do cause tension, and this is good. Here's the first one. If you have a pen or pencil, I want to write this down. The first area of tension would be quality and quantity. That's an area of tension. Quality, quantity. Quality, does it produce quantity or quantity produced quality? You know what? We want quality. I'm into quality. How many of you were not the firstborn in your household? You were not the firstborn. What if your parents had said, you know what? We're going to stop after the first child because we want the quality child. You wouldn't be here. People say, you know what? I want a church that's into quality. Okay, good. That's great. So am I. If you think that quality is the answer, then the best church would have one member. I say quality breeds quantity and quantity breeds quality. I love to fish. I was gar fishing yesterday. I don't want to catch one big gar. I want to catch a bunch of big gar. Quality gar, quantity gar. That's good. There's that tension. Fellowship Church, we have, you're talking about quality. <laughs> wow. We have, the core of our church is, is unbelievable. 
the cheering section that never sits down, the core here at Fellowship Church. And the, the other day I was in the north speaking at this church. It's a great, great church. It's really, really growing. And the pastor began to say, you know, Ed, some people around the community, some of the, some of the professional Christians, you know, the people that Jesus had problems with, you know, the religious people. He said, they're, they're, they're taking shots at us saying that, oh, we're not deep and, and we're shallow. I said, man, man, whoa, 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 just chill, just chill. I said, just relax. I said, I've heard all of that. Here's what people do. People see a growing church and they look at people who are kind of barely on the edge and the ledge of that church, the crowd. I'm not talking about the core, the crowd. And they're like, whoa, man, yeah, fellowship. <laughs> and they judge the spiritual depth by the crowd, and they're not talking to the core. Now, we've got to have both. We welcome the, <laughs> hey, man, yeah. We welcome people like that. Come on in. Welcome. Perfect church for imperfect people. Don't judge, judge fellowship, though, based on these cats. You better judge fellowship church on people who've been here year after year after year, who were praying high-risk prayers, who were giving of their time and resources, who were sharing their faith, who were worshiping God in authentic ways. That's the core. So don't, so don't be sitting there and misjudge people. Don't, 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 don't be doing that, whether it's here or, or, or somewhere else. It, 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 it's just quality versus quantity. The reason we have quantity is because we got some unbelievable quality. That's why we have however many people we have. Some people say, well, man, does that, does that, does that mean you're just into numbers? Well, it depends on what you count. If you count marriages that are saved, if you count fragmented families that come together, if you count people who are involved in substance abuse who are getting their lives right, oh yeah, we, we, we count that. We, we count people because people count. So quality versus quantity, it's tension. Here's, here's another point of tension, efficiency versus effectiveness. Efficiency is doing things right. There's a lot of companies, man, that do things right. They have processes. And churches have these processes. And oh, it's all about the process. And man, that's good. You're doing things right. You, you are efficient. Yet a fellowship church, we want to err on being effective. Because being effective is doing right things. It's doing right things. A lot of you might be efficient in your schedule, but, 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 but doing things right and, and all of that being overcommitted and overstimulated is keeping you away from the church. It's keeping you away from doing right things. That's huge. I hope you receive that and get that. Because businesses and sports teams and Churches and schools and hospitals and governments do the same thing, man. The same thing. Here's another point of tension. And this is the only thing I can guarantee you of at Fellowship Church. There's a tension between being predictable and unpredictable. We want to be predictably unpredictable. Well, where did you come up with that, Ed? I well, uh, just read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Look at the life of Jesus. There's one thing you'll see about the way Christ communicated, that he never communicated the same way using the same method. You can't put him in a box. Yet the church, we've done so poorly at that. The church, we are so predictable. And you show me a church that's predictable, and I'll show you a church that's in a rut. So at Fellowship Church, we want you to say, what is coming next? What are they going to do next? We want to be predictable in our unpredictability. Because unpredictability causes change and growth. It causes good conflict. And then you have something thriving and you have that, you have that holy tension. And, and, and then you see just, just, just the incredible things. Now, we're never going to compromise this message. Never. We never compromise the Bible or tweak the Bible. 
We change the methods, but we don't change the message. And that is, that is huge for us to understand because it takes different styles of churches to reach different styles of people. Fellowship Church is not going to reach everybody. I mean, that, that's, I know that. That's cool. But it takes different churches that are biblically driven to reach different types of people. So that's, that's a huge thing. Another point of tension that, that I have jotted down here is, is, is the tension between the simple and the complex. The simple and the complex. And this is so, so easy to miss. Mark chapter 10, Jesus was you know, talking to a crowd and kids showed up and the disciples were like, no, no, get these kids out of here. Get these kids out of here. They began to rebuke the kids and their parents for bringing the kids. What did Jesus say? What are you guys doing? Bring the kids back. You got to have faith like these kids, like, like a child. I was in Australia a couple of months ago at a conference and a friend of mine who I will not call his name is a renowned speaker. He just spoke before 30,000 people at this conference. People were on their feet. I mean, it was, it was just a great, great talk. And after the talk, we were in the green room talking. And, 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 and my son, EJ, walked up to him and, and, and he began to talk to EJ. He kind of left me and some other people and they began to talk. And he came back and he kind of had tears in his eyes. He goes, man, tonight, I know, I know my talk was, 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 was great. I said, what do you mean? You got these standing ovations of people were on their feet? He goes, no, no, no. He said, Ed, your son repeated back to me pretty much everything I said. He goes, if I can connect with a 15-year-old, I've done the deal. And if I call this guy's name out, you'd be like, oh, oh, a lot of you go, oh, golly, oh, man, are you, are you kidding me? Some people think they're being all deep. They're really being muddy. I want to be like the Caribbean, not the Trinity River. <laughs> and one of the greatest compliments you can give me or any speaker is to say, that was a simple message. That's the goal. Because it's easy for me to keep the complex complex. I've done the work. I've gone to the seminary. I can talk over your head like that. It's just easy. Yet the road from the complex to the simple is the road less traveled. It's the road that Jesus took. Look, look at Jesus. He had a choice. He could either speak in classical Greek or the street language of the day, Aramaic. Take a wild guess at what he used. Aramaic. Aramaic. So it is, it is huge that we understand this. The Bible is complex in many ways, and that's, and that's great, yet we have to serve the food where you can understand it and eat it. My, my, my favorite Vietnamese restaurant, I love Vietnamese food, is here in Dallas. It's called the East Wind. I'll give them a shout out, the East Wind in the quadrangle. It's, it, it'll, it'll, it'll knock your socks off. And the East Wind, the, the menu is in Vietnamese, but thankfully, beneath the Vietnamese, you've got English. <laughs> I mean, that's great. Because I can't, like, I can't speak Vietnamese. I try, and the waiters laugh at me. They're like, man, you know, I you know, joke around a lot. So I, I could, could see it in English, you know. And it, it's fine to, to talk Vietnamese now and then, but we, we better explain it and serve the food where people know what they're eating. So the simple, complex, that's a, that's a monster. Also something else, another point of tension, certainty versus uncertainty. Certainty versus uncertainty. Yeah, we're, we're certain about Scripture. We're certain about the foundations of the faith, yet we're uncertain many times about faith. I mean, you're going to have doubts. You're going to have questions. And I would love to put a big sign in front of Fellowship Church that says, doubters welcome. We all have bouts with doubt. I doubt some. I question some. That's good. People like worry, oh man, I have these doubts. <gasps> oh, wow. We'll talk to someone, for example, about their upcoming wedding. If you really get down to the, to the real issue, they're going to have a little doubt, a little, little doubt, even before they walk the wedding runner. Don't, don't lift your hand, but we all <laughs> had those doubts. I had a little doubt, and so let's just be honest here. 
I had a little doubt before I became a follower of Christ. I mean, I'm making this faith reception. Yeah, I understand all the evidence, and, but, but it's, a, it's, it's a step of faith. I still have questions. Well, maybe that means my faith is not strong. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't because if we had certainty, there would be no faith. And without faith, we can't be saved. We're saved by grace through faith. So by virtue of having doubts and questions, that means I've got faith. So when you have a bout with doubt, what do you do? Do you move toward faith or do you float here in the seas of relativism? And at Fellowship Church, we welcome your questions. We welcome skeptics. We welcome people who are testing the waters. We welcome that. The Bible can stand up to it. It'll take you and me through it. Faith. As a leader, I've had, I've had questions and doubts about every decision I've made here at Fellowship Church. I had doubts before I even moved up here. I had questions after I've been here for six months. I had questions when we bought this land, built the buildings, questions when we started these satellites and huge questions when we started this this big camp and in Miami, I have questions all the time. I'm uncertain. It's part of being a leader, it's part of being a person. If you're certain about stuff, you're not stepping out on faith the way God wants you to. Every time I write the tithe check, I'm a little bit uncertain. It's okay to laugh. I'm just, I'm just talking. So that's good. Certainty, uncertainty. Uncertainty, certainty. It's a good thing because it's a, it's a God thing. Well, Okay, here's the church, there's the steeple, open the doors and see all the <laughs> cheering people. <laughs> Are you a jeer leader? Oh, we can't do it, man. I don't know why we're trying that. That music, I don't know. Man. Oh, so yeah, 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 high definition screen, I'm not sure about all that, man. That mission trip, I mean, are you a jeer leader? Or are you a cheerleader? We all need cheerleaders, people to motivate us and encourage us. We need people to sit on those swings and say, once I heard my grandma say, the Laurel team is coming the way with the Bebo, with the Bible, with the Bebo, with the Bebo, Fumbo. We need that. We need that. At this time, we're going to receive our offering. Offering. Oh, oh God, I've, I've got another good one. Two bits, four bits, six bits a dollar. All for Fellowship Church. Stand up and holler. Come on, come on. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Please be seated. Now, a lot of us, when the offering is passed by, that's what we think. Two bits. Four bits, six bits, a dollar. That's pitiful if you're a Christ follower. Everything we have is, is the Lord's. You know, we can't take it with us. So, you know, it, it, it takes huge money to do ministry. Have you ever heard this verse before? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, great commission. Here's what Jesus said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Those first two words, say them with me. Go ye. Say it again. Go ye. Guess what? Go ye is expensive. <laughs> now, if you don't think it's expensive to do ministry, Wow, wow, look at this church. Look at what God is doing here and around the world. Look at our children's ministry, look at our students. How do you buy a building in downtown Dallas and retrofit it for dirt cheap? It doesn't happen. You get another building in Plano, over 110,000 square feet, retrofit it, Cost a lot of money. Go ye is expensive. Several days ago, we just closed on a brand new building in Fort Worth, downtown Fort Worth. Isn't that great? 
but I don't know how we're going to pay for it. I don't know. I'm serious. I don't know. We don't have the money. I hope you know that. This camp we're building in East Texas, I mean, awesome. We, we got a thousand acres for dirt cheap. The camp is going to cost over 30 million. We don't have the money. So you're talking about uncertainty? You're talking about faith? It's not like, oh, Fellowship Church has all that money sitting back there. Buy this, buy that. No, no, no. It's faith. It's faith. That's why as believers, listen to me now, we should make as much money as possible. I hope you are busting yourself to make as much money as you possibly can. I am. Because as a believer, and you're, many of you are believers, at least 10% of it, hopefully more than that, but at least 10% of it will go right here to the house. That's what I do. So you better be cheering me on when I'm writing these books and going out all over the world speaking like, hope he's making good money. I mean, I'm telling you. And a, a, a lot of you, and I sometimes think this too, we, we think we're pretty smart. We're not that smart. I'm not that smart. Nor, nor are you. I meet people sometimes with a lot of money. I mean, they're, I mean, I'm serious. They're not that bright. Now, some of them know where their, their stuff came from and, and they're faithful to the house. Others are so clueless who have money. And I watch these people jump from bed to bed, from deal to deal, buying this toy and that toy. I'm thinking, God, it's so pitiful. They have all these houses, yet they're homeless, spiritually homeless. Hopeless and helpless. So whatever God's blessed you with, I don't care if it's 20,000 a year or 200 million, good for you. Make sure that you're a river, not a reservoir. Make sure that you're a dynamic giver, that you don't dam up the blessings of God because that's why we're here. God's blessed you and me to build a local church. And if we don't succeed financially, how in the heck is it gonna be built? And if you can answer that question for me, Wow, I, I would love to hear your answer. That's why money matters so much to God. I'm not forcing anybody to give, twisting your arm. It's between you and God. But don't be, if you're a believer, don't be saying two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar, all for fellowship, stand up and holler. Yeah. <laughs> because some of us are tired of you, you know, always walking the check. You know, we're, we're, we're paying for the meal, man. Doing the tip and you're just walking off. It's time to step up. And do the stuff. So, to the church cheers, and they're huge. And, and again, I just want to thank you for your cheering. Thank you for, for, for just your enthusiasm as you motivate and stimulate so many here and now around the world with, with, with just a passion and the church unleashed because God has great things in store for our lives. Because it's all about here's the church, there's the steeple, open the doors, and see all the people. Let's pray as we receive our offering.